is well this is where it kicked off but also crumbled and we just have a massive issue that needs fixing because you've got talent here that could not show his talent because he did not have the money Hi everyone, it's Kira and welcome back to my channel. So I run a series on my channel called Why Blank Should Be in Formula One. I have done this video with Nick DeFries. I've done this video on Antonio Felix da Costa. And basically the series is quite self-explanatory. I talk to you all about why I believe these drivers should or should have been in Formula One at some stage in their career. So today it is Felix Rosenquist's turn. Before I get into this video, if you do enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. But yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so first off, if you don't know who Felix Rosenquist is, he is a racing car driver currently racing in IndyCar for Chip Ganassi. He is from Sweden and was born on November the 9th, 1991. Now, before we get into this, Felix has had a very successful career, like very successful. But we're gonna start off all the way back in 2008 when he started his single-seater career and he kicked it off with a bang with winning the Formula Renault Asia Cup and he won that over Matthias Becce, I think that's how you say it, and also Rio Harianto, as we know, a former Formula One driver. So straight away, he is racing with the big people that made it to Formula One. In in 2009, he carried on his winning streak by winning the Formula Renault Sweden and also NEW. In 2010, he stepped up to Formula 3 and I think Formula 3 is really where your career starts. Like I really feel Formula 3 is where it makes or breaks your career and you're in the spotlight more. He stepped straight up to German Formula 3 and he came fifth that year, so it wasn't amazing, but he did come fifth that year to Kevin Magnussen, as we know, Formula 1 driver, Daniel Apt, who is a Formula E driver, and Tom Dillman was also ahead of him, as we know, endurance driver and also former Formula E driver. So straight away, he's mixing with their names. And again, a Formula One driver is in there. In 2011, he moved up to the Formula Three European series. And again, it wasn't an amazing season, but it wasn't the worst, he came fifth. And he also done the Masters of F3 race that year, which if you don't know it, it's, it's prestigious, I would say. He won that with Muckle Motorsport. So again, he's showing his talent, showing straight away, you know, he can do this. And as much as maybe his season didn't go to plan, or it's not even that it didn't go to plan because he was a junior, like he was a rookie. I think P5 is pretty good, but he can, you know, go straight into this master's race and completely smash it. So in 2012, he moved to Formula 3 European Championship. Now this is obviously a big move. The other one was Euro Series, by the way. I don't know if I said that properly. But 2012 was the European Series and he came third in this season. So again, he is moving up. He came third with Danny Yukadea winning that championship. Again, Danny Yukadea, very good driver, probably known most for DTM. So progressively, his career is getting better and better. And again, in 2013, he won the Masters F3 race again very consistent and he also done the Euro F3 again and he came second this time so every year it is a step up and he actually had 10 wins that year so it was very tight battled for that win and you know he could have won that championship but obviously slipped away but that does not take away from the fact that he was so consistent with 10 wins in a season especially in a series like Formula 3 that's impressive now 2014 was where he made a big big statement and he won Macau we all know the Macau Grand Prix prestigious race and he went and won it and you know you're gonna be in the history books forever if you won Macau like there's no two ways about it Macau is just the best thing to win but now we are up to 2015 and this is where his career really kicked off this is well this is where it kicked off but also crumbled so in 2015 he moved over to Prema as we know Prema are literally the kings and queens of the junior series and he done Macau and won again like he's actually won Macau twice and he also finally won the F3 championship so after all these years of stepping up fifth third second he's finally won his championship and he won it over Antonio Giovinazzi by a hundred points now if you don't know the story of Antonio Giovinazzi he was able to move up to Formula 2 he said a lot of it was because of Sean Galeo's father's backing um that he as somebody that didn't have much budget could actually afford to move up to GP2 and then we know Antonio is in Formula 1 now and has done you know a few years now so obviously with winning Formula 3 you should go up to Formula 2 and this is where it is so wrong because Felix did not have the financial backing he was not able to move up to GP2, but Antonio, who came second by 100 points, can we just say, it wasn't like it was a close title battle, Antonio lost by 100 points. He was able to move up to GP2 and then move up to Formula 1. And I just think it's so unfair for Felix to have had such a good year. Yes, it did take him a couple of years in Formula 3 to get up there, but sometimes that happens. We've seen that happen with Mick Schumacher. Nobody has taken any discredit from him. We've seen it with Callum Ilo at the moment as well. It takes them a couple of years to get up and get ready, and that's all Felix done. But to see that because somebody, yet again, does not have the budget 
and they therefore cannot make their dreams into Formula 1 is so annoying. What should have happened that year was he should have moved up to GP2 and probably bossed GP2. Like, he was on a run. Like, he was getting better and better and better. And I believe that he would have won that GP2 series and moved up to Formula 1 the next year. So, in 2016, Felix had to find a new route and he actually went over to America and started to do indie lights. This didn't go to plan. His career kind of crumbled this year he actually done a lot of other gt racing and things like that there was so many things that he'd done this year but it just kind of all didn't come to place and you know to have such a successful year in 2015 before that and to just kind of fall off a little bit the next year must be heartbreaking but he did come second in macau to antonio felix da costa i mentioned that in antonio's video that i done as i said i'll leave that link somewhere um but yeah he that's kind of the only achievement he really had in 2016 so in 2016 to 2017 is when felix kind of changed what he was doing and he moved over to formula e with mahindra now this was actually quite a good thing to do i think he kind of saw a new opening beginning and he thought let's go and try it out and he done quite well he came third that year for mahindra and then in between the gap of form because formula e run a little bit differently than one between two years in 2017 he then went over to do super formula and came third in that as well so he's got the talent but I think he was just struggling to know where to go. Like after this path up to Formula One didn't work, he was kind of going to America, going and doing electric racing, then going to Japan. Like I'm not really sure he really knew what he was doing, but as well, every single championship he went to, he done well in. Whether electric, whether an Indy car, whether in Super Formula, he was able to compete and I think that's really impressive. So he carried on doing Formula E up until the year 2018 to 2019. He done one race there while Pascal Verlaine was waiting to come out of his Mercedes contract and then he moved back to IndyCar and done IndyCar full time. So in 2019 he came sixth for IndyCar in Chip Ganassi and then this year he is currently 10th for Chip Ganassi in the championship but big news literally broke only a couple of days ago that he's going to be racing for McLaren Arrow in IndyCar for 2021 which I think is going to be a big move. He's going to partner Pato Award. McLaren are up and coming in IndyCar. We know they're putting a lot of power into this and a lot of determination into the IndyCar program so I'm really excited to see where his future goes in IndyCar but you know there's still that part of me that sits at this and thinks he shouldn't be in IndyCar. No disrespect to IndyCar at all. That dominant Formula 3 year he had in 2015 should have promoted him into GP2 in 2016. But instead he had to find other alternatives and he was moving left, right and centre. The poor guy, he was literally doing everything under the sun. He was doing GT, electric racing, other Formula 3 categories. He should not have been going backwards. And unfortunately he was because yet again of budget and we just have a massive issue that needs fixing because you've got talent here that could not show his talent because he did not have the money. So overall, it is such a shame that he wasn't able to move up to GP2 in 2016, as I feel like he then would have had a shot in Formula One in 2017 or 2018. I'm actually kind of also disappointed that no junior academies or no Formula One teams and their driver academies were able to pick him up. I would have liked to have seen a team maybe pick him up in that environment because you will succeed so much higher if you have that backing from a Formula One team because you've got a route up to Formula One. And when you don't, it's so difficult as so many people have proven to get up into Formula 1 if you do not have that team associated with you. But regardless of that, I still think he is an amazing driver and he has achieved so much. As I mentioned earlier, he can do every sort of driving. He can do GT driving, he can do electric car driving, he can do IndyCar, he can do Formula 3. This man can shine no matter what series he's in. He's a very fast driver and he should not be looked down on. He's still going. He is only 28 years old. He's doing amazing in IndyCar. I really hope that his IndyCar season picks up a little bit more this year. Unfortunately, I don't feel like there is any place for him in Formula 1 now. I do believe he probably has, you know, gone past that age and... I just don't see any gaps opening in Formula 1 and there's a lot of juniors that I think would prefer to come up. But he should have had that shot in 2017 for Formula 1, 100%. So there we have it. That is it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it and I hope you learned a little bit more about Felix Rosenquist and what an amazing driver he is. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And also let me know in the comment section below what other drivers you want me to do this series on. I've been loving doing this series so far. It's had a really good response and I'm just really excited to carry on this series. So thank you again for watching this video and I will see you soon for another one. Goodbye.